that's that can't love, no fault that but mistakes, I know you love that I cost three more mistakes, ignore it Sorry, enough, I'm past that can't love, no fault that but mistakes, I know you love that I cost three more mistakes, ignore it Yo, what is good with you guys? Not gonna do some crazy intro, just gonna show you how to mix some vocals, and uh, yeah, let's hop into it. All right, so if you're actually hearing this clip right here, it means I didn't have enough time to show y'all how to mix a beat. So y'all heard the preview. So you just wanna drag and drop your stems in. If you're actually receiving stems from a client, what I would do is just cut off this first initial breath or whatever. Anything else, I wouldn't worry about it, unless there's something that sticks out to you. All right, so let me turn all the effects off down here, and let's just have a listen. Sorry, enough, I'm past that can't love, no fault that mistakes, I know you love that. I cost three more mistakes, ignore it. So there's a ton of dynamics in the vocals. First thing I kind of do is I sell the beat and I kind of just hollow out the beat if it needs it. And this one really did because it's a really full beat. Basically just to kind of make room for the vocals. The first couple of effects I kind of add without actually listening to the beat. So these are his two primary tracks right here because Geo Mafia, especially, he records his vocals on two different tracks. They're already tuned as you can hear. Sorry. So I don't need to worry about that. But if I need to tune, I often use something called Metatune. It's a really great tuning plugin by Slate Digital. So the first thing I do on my vocals is I control the low end with an EQ. The low end on Geo's vocals are pretty well controlled already. So I just did a low cut, of course. A couple bands around two, 300, just to kind of take away from the low mid. My tries like I can't ignore you. And I just say it ain't no more trouble. Don't be afraid of low end, but also don't take away too much. So you kind of want it to sound about like this. So what I do is I add some multi-band compression and saturation. And this is really where a lot of the heavy lifting is done. What I do is I go to preset. I select the A preset right here, and you're gonna get something like this right here. I trust like I can't ignore you, and I just say it ain't no more trouble. So this is without. I trust like I can't ignore you, and this is with. I trust like I can't ignore you. So it's a lot louder. There's a lot more low end. So when you first open it up, it's gonna look like this right here. So what I do is I go to bands, and I kind of adjust these bands right here. If I need more high end, I pull it up. I trust like I can't ignore you, and I kind of adjust it to where he kind of needs to be. And the AT2020, which is what these vocals were. Recorded on. This is a really garbage mic for high end. Like I'm using one right now. So you can obviously hear all the resonance in the top end that I'm just too lazy to remove. I really kind of turned that band down quite a bit. And then after that, I add a compressor. I trust like I can't ignore you. And I just to say it ain't no more trouble. Cause I seen the devil where go, y'all yeah, too. fools go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So yeah, you want a decent amount of compression. I wouldn't go too overboard, but I like quite a bit of compression, especially since these vocals are just bone dry. There was no recording chain at all whatsoever. It's a completely dry signal. So what compression is doing is it's kind of leveling it out. So see how the waveforms are really uneven, like this is really quiet and this is really loud. The compressor, which is the Arbox compressor, it really helps kind of smooth that out. It's not gonna by any means fix it because it's so drastic, but it'll help it a lot. That shit was fools go wrong. So next, because the compressor brought out a ton of just S's and nasty sibilants, I put on a waves de-esser. What I do is I click on S chain right here and I kind of scan through the frequencies until you hear all the really harsh S's right here. Here. So really about right there, and you don't want to completely remove the S's, but you want to take all the really loud S's out. Can't show no love, it goes around, comes back for you, the more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. So that's a huge difference, and I know I just said don't completely take out the S's, but I'm going to go a little bit overboard on it, because as soon as I start brightening it up with a saturator, it's going to really kind of come back more. So for reverb, I use 7th Heaven. Typically, I don't like to send my reverb. I actually like it on the vocals themselves. I want it to sound like the reverb is on the vocals and not just a accompanying the vocals. I use a large ear preset always. It's just a really, really good preset. And I kind of adjust the low cut so the reverb isn't really boomy. Goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. So it's quite a bit of reverb, but again, definitely play the beat while you're setting your reverb because what might sound good to your ears soloed may not actually sound good when the beat's playing. Yeah, I can't show no love. It goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. So that's about kind of where I want it. Definitely make sure to turn it with low cut because if you turn it off, you'll see it sounds really muddy. I can't show, I can't show. Hear all the really muddiness in the reverb. So if you turn it up, I can't show, I can't show. The reverb sounds way cleaner, so I'm gonna put it about right here. I can't show. 
not like that. And again, this is also something that you would play the beat for to kind of set it. So the vocals definitely don't sound good yet. I'm just setting my reverb and delay first. And then I just add a regular delay. I tend to use a ping pong preset. Really like that preset. I set the time about right here and I move the tone up just a little bit. Essentially, it's just a low cut. I can't show no love. Goes around, comes back for you. My trust, like I can't ignore you. So it's really aggressive. I do like a lot of delay. And then next, I load up a virtual mix rack to add another compressor and then a saturator. So let me just turn off the saturator right here and focus on the compressor. So this is an LA-2A style compressor. Basically, it's going to kind of really control those peaks. If the waveforms are right here, it's going to push down on them like this. When you put this compressor on, you're going to lose a lot of volume. It's pretty aggressive. Here are my settings right here. And you'll notice when I play it, the volume of the vocals is a lot more even. I can't show no love. It goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. This sounds so much better. And also for this compressor right here, if you want to find a compressor, just Google like LA-2A compressor. You'll get a lot of stuff similar to this. I really recommend an 1176 before this because it really sounds good, but I just happen to use an Rvox. So yeah, this is Revival. You can use any saturation plugin. It's going to make it sound really crisp, which is what the shimmer is. And then the thickness is just, it's adding thickness to the vocal. Before. I can't show no love. And then after. I can't show no love. It goes around, comes back for you. And then after that, I add my final EQ. So I just remove a little bit more muddiness right here. I do another low cut to pull back on any lows that the saturated created that I didn't really like. And again, I also do this while the beat is playing. I can't show no love. I can't show no love. It goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. It just sounds perfect. You know what I mean? It was like the final thing that was missing. I can't show no love. It goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. And there's the city. So I thinned it out considerably because I just prefer that sound. All these tiny dips right here, it kind of gets rid of all those nasty frequencies that are just shooting through and not sounding that good. I'll kind of demonstrate what I mean. So this one right here, this one right in the middle, if we remove it. So let me just create like a band right here, make it pretty narrow about like that. And you're going to want to turn it up really high and you're going to want to scan through. Goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. And there's the city, no more try. So you hear that ear piercing whistle right there that's a frequency you want to get rid of just get rid of the loudest ones if that makes sense so you'll notice that it becomes really really loud right about right here the rest of it was already loud but this was just ear piercingly loud like that one right there that's when i actually missed i can't show no And then let me add this one back right here because I, I did take it away. I can't show no love. Goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. You're gonna want to go through and get rid of all those. And then the final thing we're gonna add on, and this is just an extra thing that I like to do. So it's vocal synth by I'm not sure what company actually made it. But what I do is I go to presets and under the clear right here, under auto mode presets, I find added texture. It's all default settings. The only thing that I do is I turn off distort and I turn off vocoder because those create like some extra high end. So if I turn it all the way up, it sounds like this. I can't show no love. Goes around, comes back for you. So I just want a tiny bit of that. And even just a little bit makes a huge difference. It's not annoying like it is if you turn it up all the way. I can't show no love. Goes around, comes back for you. The more I try, it's like I can't ignore you. So now you're going to want to actually set the volume of your vocals. Since you have all the effects on, there's really not a set number for it. You just kind of have to do it by ear. So now for the ad libs, basically all I do is I just right click the preset I made, go to file, save mixer track as, and I just drag it right here onto the next mixer track over. And then at this point, what I do is I go back and I just kind of tweak the EQ. You can see I added like a huge cuts right here and some huge cuts right here on the second EQ right here. And this really gets rid of all the low end because I really want to thin them out. Oh. And then of course I turn on the reverb, but again, set the reverb while the beat is playing. And also play the main vocals too, just so you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna sound like. And then after that, to just add like some extra, what I do is I open up Vector Rack and I add a few things here. First of all, I add a crystallizer. And basically what it's gonna do is kind of like a fancy delay. So if I turn it up all the way, it sounds like this. So I just want a very little bit of that. So I'm just going to turn that down. And then I added a saturator right here. The sapotator. I think I said that right. But yeah, it just adds a little bit of distortion. And then I just add a pan man right here. Just kind of pan it left and right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to say, yo, no. It was yeah. fools go wrong. Yeah, I can't show no love. Cause what goes around comes back for you. No more tracks, like I can't ignore you. And I just to say, there ain't no more trouble. I seen the devil where go, y'all. It was fools go wrong. We have a feature right here, which is Sid Lost. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. You saw me calling, they never reach out. I'm addicted to you, I can never leave now. Oh, I'm struggling, I can't figure out. You were so blind to a mercy, you had to see now. You had to see that. He is also a crazy artist, someone I work with a lot. So, honestly, for features, all I do is I basically just duplicate, save mixer track ass, drag it over to right here. I mean, of course, I have a different chain for him that I'd normally use on him that I had created for him, but. If you want to stay consistent, you're gonna have to use the same kind of plugins that you use on the other vocalists or your own vocals or whoever you are. And yeah, of course, I just did the thing again where I just kind of adjusted the EQ. I pulled this back just a little bit. I adjusted all the EQs. I boosted his highs here. Their mics are completely different. Sids is a lot cheaper. It doesn't have a lot of high end in it like the AT does. I just go over it and tweak it. You know what I mean? I use the same plugins. I just tweak it differently. Just for comparison, I'll show you both different vocals. Like they're completely different mics man like on geos i turned down the high end quite a bit on maximus but on sids i had that thing jacked up a lot higher just so i can get a little bit of that high end back this is afterwards Fools go wrong. Ooh, oh, oh. and of course i did his ad libs the same way i've been trying huh? your lot have been dying huh? your father been crying you got no hiding that's trifling no I'm still chasing after his fool's go uh, On and on he keep going But I'm not trying to run away Not trying to run away from Make sure the volume is matched too It's kind of tricky but once you get it, it's worth it You ran away I'm sorry I can't explain why Oh, I take these pills and I stand Sorry, enough I'm past that can't love no fault that Mistakes I know you love that I cost three more mistakes ignore it and then on the master, just to kind of prepare it for mastering, because I do mixing and mastering in two different sessions. Projects are using FL Studio, which is what I'm using today. Normally I use Pro Tools, but for the sake of the tutorial, we're using FL today. And you can get a perfectly good mix in FL2. Exactly the same, unless you want like surround mixing or something like that. First, I added a Mo TT, and what this does, let me just go back to easy so it looks a lot easier. But basically what this does is add some multi-band compression on the whole thing. And what I do is I turn down the high band and the mid amount right here, and then the low, I just keep it at 100. I want to really compress the low here, and I just put it at like 15%. I'll just turn it off. I been trying, huh? Your lot have been dying, huh? Your father been crying. You got no hiding that trifling, no. So it makes the kick a lot fatter. And then I just add a really rough EQ. Again, I did the same things here where I just kind of take a band and I raise it up really high like that and kind of scan through and look for anything that pops out. It's really, really loud and obnoxious. And then just to kind of make the mastering easier, I went ahead and threw on Ozone 8. And I'm probably not going to be able to play this while recording because my CPU is so high. But yeah, I just added a couple EQs here and there. Again, right here was a resonance. And by the way, you hold out to like scan the frequencies. And then a dynamic EQ. It's like the way a compressor works. So if the signal passes a certain level then it cuts it out it's not always active it's only active when it gets loud enough if i click on this band you can see that in action right here i've been trying uh, your lot have been dying uh, your father been crying you got no hiding that's trifling no. and again this was just a really harsh spot and then i just added an imager kind of spreads it out i moved the low down mono just a little bit more and i just kind of push everything else out stereo i've been trying uh, your lot have been dying uh, so it's really subtle, but it adds up. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the mastering. So here we are in a new session. I exported at about negative 12 to negative nine. So yeah, the first thing I put on my master here is just a free limiter. And I did this to kind of turn up the gain just a little bit. That was the only reason that's on here. You don't need to put it on here. I just, it's just like a random thing I did. Sorry. So that just kind of boosted it to negative nine right there. And then I just added an R box. And this is really interesting because it's a vocal compressor. It doesn't really matter though, because a compressor is a compressor, no matter what name is on it. And I really like it for kind of gluing it together. Sorry, enough, I'm past that, can't love, no fault that. Mistakes, I know you love that. I cost three more mistakes, ignore it. And it's really subtle, but you know, sometimes mixing is a lot of really subtle changes. And then I just added an EQ, and you can see there's like a few more resonant frequencies right here that I just kind of took away. Sorry, enough, I'm past that. 
and then I put on the Ozone 8. I don't understand the hate behind this thing, man. And if you're like a dude who can afford a bunch of analog hotboards and sewing machines and all that crap, the good for you, bro. Like, hey, let me master an Ozone, bro. Come on. Jokes aside, it is a very, very good plugin, and I highly recommend it for mastering. It's got everything you need. So yeah, first, let me just turn on this off. First, I add an EQ, and I kind of boosted the high and took out some of the really low lows right here. And I just kind of went through, and I just kind of boosted what I kind of wanted more of. Sorry, enough, I'm past that can't love no so you can see right there, I wanted a little bit more of that boom. And keep in mind that this is not anything that you need to worry about. Like all these tiny little changes I'm doing, this is not anything that you need to worry about yourself. Just do what you think needs to be done. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just kind of boosting things that I kind of want more of. And then I threw on a dynamic EQ. Again, this is just an EQ that only works when the signal passes over a threshold. So you select the band and you can set that threshold down here. I don't mess with any of this other stuff right here. But yeah, I, I wanted some low mids gone. This is basically an EQ that you would put on if you wanted to like suppress some frequencies and not really kind of remove them if that makes sense with this it's a little bit more moderate it's really good for getting rid of harsh frequencies Sorry. didn't like that didn't like that at all that was a little bit too loud for me i wanted to get rid of that so let's just add on Yulin loudness meter down here. It's a completely free plugin and I use it to kind of monitor the LUFs. It stands for loudness units to full scale. It's basically how loud we perceive it to be. Like two sounds could be at zero dB, but one of the sounds could be louder. That's what this monitors. So yeah, I kind of keep this open right here. And yeah, you're going to want this integrated LUFs right here to be at about negative seven. I like it at negative seven, which is a level that a lot of music in this genre is mastered to short term as well. But I don't really look at short term. I just look at integrated. So in order to get that loudness level without just completely ruining the mix. First, the vintage limiter right here, move the threshold down until it's actually doing something. So you can see right here, that blue line right here, if it dips down, that means it's doing some suppressing. And that's what you want, just a little bit of that. Sorry, and the character right here is how fast the attack and releases. In a nutshell, the lower you move this, the more distorted it's gonna be. 0.00, .00 is like infinity. It's just like a brick wall limiter. It's gonna hit the threshold and it's gonna distort. I move it no higher than about one for this song right here in particular. Sorry, and it's already at zero db Sorry. it's not loud enough it's only hitting at about negative nine so what i do is i throw in a maximizer put the ceiling at 0.0, .0 and i actually move up the character to quite a bit all these different modes are just different limiter modes or whatever so i use the irc for transient it just kind of minimizes any kind of pumping and distortion click through all of these if you have ozone to find like the best option for you turn true peak on and yeah we're gonna pull the threshold down until it's loud enough no Alright, so after actually trying to pull it down some, I'm not actually able to get past about 8 luffs without it sounding a little more distorted than I want it to be. 8 luffs, I think I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at that. And just an extra tip for people thinking that you have to mix in negative 14. I've never met an engineer who masters to negative 14 luffs. That is extremely quiet. Do between negative 9 and negative 5. So uh, yeah, that's how you mix a song. If you guys want me to drop this song, I totally will. Shout out to Gio and Sid going crazy. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys got something from the video. So uh, yeah, until next time.